Yeah, I think so. so stop going like this. All right, I'm going to also be the chair. All right, if I could have your attention, please. I call this house to order. This house will be debating the motion. This house would allow individuals to sell their organs. To open the debate for the proposition side, I invite the Prime Minister, me. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and must I say, you look gorgeous today. <laughs> Members of this August House, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We're here in the 21st century, a time where technology and medical techniques has allowed us to preserve, extend, and improve the quality of life. Life is our focus in this debate. My colleagues and I believe that the conditions of life are more important than the conditions after death. And we want you to remember that as a way of thinking about this debate. Whether some people may go to their grave missing a single organ, but if that organ is bringing life and opportunity to others, then it is in fact a wonderful thing that we have done. We believe that we should allow individuals to sell their organs. Well, I, we think the, the terms here are pretty self-explanatory. Obviously by individuals we mean adults. We don't think that children should be allowed to sell their organs, so you would have to be an adult to do that. And by organs, we mean body parts. Obviously, we do not mean musical instruments. <laughs> we believe that such an important uh, idea, such an important proposal, has to be carried out with care. That's why we would spe speculate, specify our model. We believe that individual adults should be allowed to sell their organs, <coughs> non-vital organs during their lives, or any of their organs after death, to a government agency. This agency will then have the opportunity to reimburse that donor through a cash payment, tax deferral, payment for other family members, or perhaps even a charitable donation. Our debate team would be a good place to start. <laughs> Organs will then be placed with recipients at the discretion of regional and national medical agencies on the basis of which sir. organ placements will save the most lives. Yes, sir? So you talk a lot about vital organs. Who's the agency? Who's determining what's a vital organ and what's not? I'd really like you to clarify that. I, I didn't say vital organ. I don't believe I've used the word vital at all, sir. And we speculate, we, we st stipulate that regional and national medical agencies. To support this proposal, we would like to make a number of points. We will argue first that the current organ shortage is killing people. We will argue second that our proposal will save lives and enhance the quality of life. My colleague Darius, in his speech, will introduce <coughs> our other new matter issues that we believe that the individual controls their body and that you should have the choice over what happens to your body. And we also believe that we will better deal with the pernicious practice of black market body part sales. Please now turn to our first argument, that organ shortage is killing people. There are more people waiting for organ transplants than there are transplants that have been offered. Obviously, the incentive system of give an organ, save a life has worked with some people. Education has worked with some people. But we think we can go the next level to try to create incentives for people to, not at this time, for, for people to give their organs. There are waiting lists of people who are waiting for eyes, for kidneys, for liver transplants, for, enough for heart transplants, many vital organs. And many of these people die while waiting to see if they can receive the gift of life. Many have no hope. Many, for example, may not be a very, uh, an excellent candidate for a transplant. So because there's a small number of organs, they don't even get a chance. But if there are more organs available, more people can, get, can take advantage of this. This sense of desperation is tragic, and it leads to a lot of other things that Darius is going to talk about. People in India who get kidnapped 
and then come to a couple of weeks later missing a kidney. The fact that in China, sometimes prisoners on death row are executed based on whether they have organs to offer or not. Yes, ma'am. But don't you think that by putting a dollar sign on an organ, that opens up the possibility that that will happen even more because it takes away the protection of the law that is currently in the status quo? Ma'am, the current system is the current system of pernicious trafficking, which I've talked about, is not regulated. When we increase the supply of legal organs, these things will go down. And yes, dollar signs exist in society. Sorry to let you know about that. <laughs> Our second major argument: we save lives. We save lives. We increase the incentives for people to donate. We provide funds for them to use during their lives. We provide funds that could go to their families after they have passed away. They can make charitable donations. We increase these incentives. Market incentives, here comes that dollar sign, market incentives have been shown to be effective, right? When yes, you provide market incentives for people, they're more likely to do things, whether it's less likely to smoke cigarettes, Right or, right, or more likely to obey the speeding laws. Our increase in supply will help those that are waiting. They will not live in desperation. They will know that there is hope. And for many of them, these hopes will be fulfilled. The Medical Association will, will allocate these based on the needs of medical practitioners. Yes, ma'am. In Spain, they don't have an organ shortage, not because they can modify body parts, because they allow an opt-out rather than opt-in system. Why is yours better? Ours doesn't have to be better than Spain, ma'am. It just has to be better than the system used throughout the rest of the world. We believe it is. Therefore, we would urge you to propose it. There are children everywhere. There are children all around the world who are desperately waiting. They want to know the answer to questions. Mothers, fathers, grandparents, what question are they waiting for? Waiting for an answer to? Will there be an organ for me? Will I be able to live? Now, the opposition will have some clever arguments because they're an intelligent bunch. But you have to tell you have to ask yourself, is their argument so good that you would tell someone, no, there is no body part for you. Your life will come to an end soon because of the arguments that they talk about. We want to enhance the conditions of life. We urge adoption of this motion. Thank you. credit card debt, so significant you can't pay it off, and your credit card company tells you you have one option. Your option is to sell your kidney to pay off your credit card, because the government has now allotted monetary value to those body parts. Selling yourself is unethical. It's a form of prostitution, and it's, and it's a form of slavery. When there is a dollar value associated with your body, you are less human. You are a monetary fund that is traded and it can, is a commodity. Um, I'm going to move on to refutation now. Um, and then I'm going to talk about my two points about how uh, legalizing organ donation both hurts the giver and the receiver. Um, and my partner will talk about the state's responsibility in organ donation. On that point, sir. How is this any different than the blood plasma donations down the street where they give you free Red Sox tickets? They, they, there would be more significant, um, there would be more significant funding if, you, if, you're, if your system is going to be effective, there would have to be significant funding. It'd have to be more than a Red Sox ticket for somebody to give up their kidney. So, therefore, there's going to be a whole lot of money associated with this system, and there'd be a lot of problems. So, uh, Tuna got up here and talked about how they're focusing on life. 
But we want to worry about the quality of life. Is this quality of life worth living if you're walking around with uh, people trying to get your kidneys to, um, because there's a monetary value to it? Um, he said it would only be adults and it would only be for non-vital organs. But how are you going to guarantee that every time this is for, that every adult is going to be regulated properly? There could be children who, who are put through this system, unknowing to the government. Um, what happens now? The um, and the government will determine what is vital and what is non-vital. Now, how is that going to work out? I want to know more about that. I think that's a weak point in their argument that somehow the government's just going to decide everything. Uh, that's, that's, that's not clear. And no, thank you, sir. You have plenty I of time to tell explain. You. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, and the current organ shortage is critical. Well, people are dying from organ organ shorting organ organ shortage, and maybe something should be done about this. But we don't think that the all-out regulate legalization of of organ donation is the right thing to do. We think that it will cause more problems than it will solve. Um, and he talked about how money equals effectiveness in organ donation. Now this is the reason we are here saying that it's not effective. Because once you allot money to an organ, that means you're falling down to prostitution. You're falling down to selling people to each other. And it's not humane. Yes, sir? You spoke about how something should be done about this organ shortage, but our plan is not what should be done. And you said there would be complications. Yes, there should be what education. are these complications? There, Please there explain. There should be education. There should be people encouraging to give them on their own. An organ is priceless. We should not be putting a price on an organ. How do you deem the price of an organ? An organ is an essential body part um, to you. It may be non-vital, but who is going to determine this non-vitalness? Um, I personally like both of my kidneys, and I would not want to. Oh. I, I would consider them both very vital. That's special. <laughs> 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 Okay, I'm going to move on to my first point, how um, organ, legalizing of organ, uh, organ, organ donation, or uh, of allotting money to organ do donation would hurt the donor. This would, because the government cannot regulate this effectively, um, uh, because the government will most likely um, contract out uh, corporations to do their work like they do in many uh, situations in healthcare. There will be a lot of organ stealing. So people will wake up one morning all drugged up and they will have no kidney. They'll have a big stitch back here and they'll go to their doctor and they say, where's my kidney? And the doctor will say, well, you must have sold it to somebody and you're lying. You know, the government is not going to regulate this properly. Um, they'll be forced organ giving. Like my example of the credit card company saying, well, you're not totally poor, you still have two kidneys. People will know that there's a, a money allotted to it and that um, you can force somebody into giving their organ. And it will happen because there won't be any regulation effective enough to stop it. In fact, their proposal will encourage this because there's more money allotted to the organs now. Um, Private companies will not have good regulations. There will be more. Uh, there will be more problems in surgery and more problems because there's there's uh, more of them going on and it won't be done effectively. Now I'm going to move on to my arguments about how this will hurt the giver, because both sides of this argument, uh, both sides of this proposition's argument, will hurt hurt uh, the giver and the receiver. It's bad for the receiver because doctors will push organs onto people. Doctors do this all the time. Have you ever heard of restless leg syndrome? They make syndromes up just to sell stuff. And they're going to say, oh, sorry, I think you're going to need a kidney there. And they're going to get a big fat check at the end of the day for putting in a kidney and to somebody who didn't need a kidney. Um, it's, it's also an incredibly dangerous process, and, and there'll be more, in, there'll be more <laughs> operations that are unnecessary, and there will be more risks to people. 
So I have talked about the legalization of or how the legalization of organ donation hurts both the giver and the receiver. Um, it cannot be regulated effectively, and more harm will result than the people saved. Sure, some people will get their organs that they wouldn't have before, but we say more people will be hurt because there cannot be good regulation for this process. Thank you. leader stood up and said, basically, our plan is, as a government, to get people to sell organs to the government. Therefore, we will have more organs to provide people in order for organ donations to happen, to, for people to survive. That's our plan. So now, basically, what the opposition leader has come out and said is that we're going to bungle it. We're not going to be able to handle it. They're saying doctors are going to commit malpractice, basically, by pushing organs on people. They're, the opposition leader is saying that the government will, will this will cause more problems because the gover a market with the government by selling is worse than a black market across the world. So now, i just like to go over uh, my plan. First, I'm going to go through some <coughs> refutation. Then I'm going to add a, a couple of main points, my main points, the first being the black market that's going on around the world and how our, our plan addresses this. And second, freedom of choice, why people should have freedom of choice. And third, just an additional third, is a little added bonus to um, our, of our plan of selling organs, how we'll be able to save a lot of families from going into debt. And then uh, a closing of why you should vote for us. Um, first, on to my reputation. Uh, the opposition leader basically made three main points. The, fir the first main point was, we will be hurting the donor. But he never actually said how the donor will be hurt. He gave us a couple of maybes. Well, maybe. Sir. Yes. Have you, are you trying to say that you've never made a bad decision in your life based on the fact that someone might pay you for it? Well, of course people have made bad decisions. But this decision can save people's lives, and people should be responsible for their own decisions. The government should not be bailing everyone out. People should be responsible for themselves. Well, anyway, back to my points. First, we will be hurting the donor. Uh, but we're not hurting the donor. He just said maybe uh, there will be more black market. But as I will address later, we are actually helping the black market to end. Then he also talked about how um, this would most likely be contracted out. But our government is meant to handle this. Our government is meant to allocate. Our government is a government based on fairness. And our government can handle this. Next, he talked about uh, doctors. This was my favorite part of his speech. He talked about how doctors, A, cannot decide who needs organs, and B, cannot, cannot, um, will push organs on people and will be, uh, will be hurting people. Well, first, on to the decision of giving organs. Who should get organs and who should not get organs? Well, every day in hospitals around the world, I'm sorry to inform you, doctors make decisions about who should live and who should die. Doctors decide who's going, who, who can afford to get one medicine, who, can, um, who is in line to live. Well, what I am saying, what the government side is saying is, now we are giving doctors, the people who we train, to, to help people survive, we are giving doctors extra tools. Instead of, uh, uh, hypothetically, doctors and the American Medical Association having five organs to give out, now they'll have 50. We'll be able to save more people in America because doctors will have more capacity to solve problems. So the main point I'm trying to get at here is that we have, um, the do doctors are the most reliable people to make these decisions, and by enacting our legislation, you will be giving doctors more tools to help people survive. So now, on to my point. Yes, ma'am. If all you care about is saving lives, there are lots of children out there that need organs too. Why are you squeamish about letting children do this? There must be something you think might be immoral about it. 
Well, we are squeamish about letting children do it because we, children are not at the capacity to make decisions. Seriously, Whenever, yeah, yeah. Why do we not allow children to drink alcohol? Why do we not allow children to drive? Because children have to get to a certain age that they are conscious of their decisions. That's the only problem. Well, on to the black market. Um, the opposition team spoke about a black market that is going to be spawned. People are going to be kidnapped. Their organs are going to be stolen. Well, I'm sorry to inform you, but this black market has been going on for a number of years in countries around the world. Let me tell you what happens. Basically, a rich man needs an organ. Not as badly as a poor person. So our medical association, our doctors, rightfully so, make the decision that you cannot get an organ for a little bit of a while. A little while. You are going to have to wait. So what happens? This rich, person, this rich person says, screw that. I'm going to go to China. Where they can get, where I can pay for an organ, and I will get my organ. So this person will fly out to China, will uh, will go to some bogus doctor. This bogus doctor will contract someone to get an organ. Which many times, how this will happen is a person will be murdered, and their organs will be harvested. After this person's organ is harvested, this rich man will pay an exorbitant fee. When he pays this exorbitant fee, he will get his organ. But there's another problem with this. Not only are smaller nations being exploited by the current system, the status quo, also, because these bogus doctors are performing these surgeries, the people who are actually getting the organs are dying as well. So our plan solves for this. The way we solve for this is that by having government regulation, by the gov by, uh, uh, by we will be able to stop this black market. The government will have more organs to give out, and these people will not have to go out for that. To close, I'd like to talk about the importance of freedom of choice. We should be able to do what we want, what is necessary for us to survive with our bodies. The gov we have slashed down many laws which regulate what we are able to do with our bodies because the government should not have a say of what happens in someone's private life. The gov we have taken the government out of the bedroom. Uh, 50 years ago, people were not allowed to use birth control. Now they can. People should be able to make their own decisions. In closing, um, this is what you should be voting on today. Which way will people be able to live better? How will people survive better? The plan that is in place today, the plan that says uh, you can donate organs for free, or our plan, which the other team has admitted, will get more organs and will allow more people the chance to survive. Thank you. expecting to be talking about organ donation uh, today, but uh, happy to do it and happy to be here. And you know, it's interesting how the first government table has seemed to paint this fairy tale land. Snap, the proposal goes into place and everything's okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you back to reality, which I think that the opposition bench has been trying to explain to you all along exactly why this won't work. And I think that the second speaker of the government bench ignored a lot of these main points. So what I'm going to do in my speech is going to tell you exactly how he ignored those points and refute the points that he made and then go on to my own argument of state responsibility. Now, the second speaker got up here and his first point was the black market. He said, hello ladies and gentlemen, there is a black market going on and if we implement this plan, that will go away. I don't think it will. In fact, I think it will actually increase the black market. And let me tell you how. Once the government justifies monetary value on organ donations and organs in general. That's only gonna increase the incentive, as the first government speaker said, to have these organ donations and to have this monetary value exchange. He got up here and he said, this will become effective. You're right, it will. It will become effective in a very negative sort of way. People are going to go after these organs for money, which is what they're doing now. It's happening in third world countries. You're right. Now it's gonna happen in our country. Great, that sounds like a great plan and something that I'm really interested in doing. 
I think not, ladies and gentlemen. And not only will that happen, but the law, the protection of law, my partner's first argument, which was completely neglected by the government bench, will go away. Someone will show up and say, my organ is gone, doctor. I didn't want to give it away, but it's gone. The doctor's going to say, oh, really? That, that $50,000 that, that you probably received for it? All of a sudden, that protection of law goes away. This is the argument against prostitution. This is why we don't want to like legalize prostitution or legalize drug sales like this, because this is what will happen. People's protection of law goes away. They can no longer use the excuse that they had nothing to do with it because they're getting paid for it. And the doctor's going to say, OK, yeah, right. Like, you didn't get paid for that. I don't even want to risk that. I know on side opposition, we feel so strongly against that that that's a risk that we are just not willing to take. Now, his second argument, which he got to in a minute time left, may I add, so I didn't have the opportunity to ask my question, was the freedom of choice argument. He said, <laughs> government says all the time we can do what we want. We, we, we let them take birth control now. The government has clearly stepped out of the bedroom, I think was his phrase. Again, this is untrue. The government regulates health all the time. We do have smoking laws. We do have drinking laws. We do have drug laws. We do have abortion laws. The government has a very firm hand and the health system, which we don't think is a bad thing, but we think as soon as the government turns into a capitalistic system with money on organ donations, we think that that's when it goes sour, and we're not willing to take that risk, which is largely what my argument <coughs> has to deal with today. And that's what I'd like to move on, but first I will take your point. If we increase the number of organs legally available, how does that not both increase life and decrease demand for the black market? I do understand your point. You're saying more organs, more survival. But sir, if there's so many detrimental consequences that screw our system, screw our moral beliefs, screw everything that our government actually stands for, then well, sir, that's just frankly not good enough. We say on side opposition is quality life versus quantity. His last, his last words were, life is better if there is more survival. That is not true. We don't think that is true on side opposition. We do think that survival is good, but if you're paying the price of your morality, your ethics, it's just not good enough. We're willing to wait in line. If that means that whoever deserves that organ gets it first, and if there's no monetary value on that, which will increase the incentive of donation, but it'll also increase the incentive of malpractice, it'll increase the incentive of the government uh, interaction with, with areas that we just don't frankly think that they should be. And that onward goes to my point, but let me get to my point, and maybe I'll take your point in a minute. My point is about state responsibility. At the end of the day, if you open the door to say monetary value is going to exist within the state government, let's look at examples that that happens right now. Let's look at the prescription drug world. Let's look at insurance. Let's look at uh, retirement homes. These are things that all have monetary values on them and capitalistic intervention, right? And that really has failed us in our system today. And we think that if you put monetary value on, on organ donation, that will also fail us in our system today, and we're not willing to risk that. So let's look at what the government does now. You're right, the government does have its hands in healthcare, and we think that's a good thing. But they have it in their hands for the right reasons. They're not worried about dollar signs when it comes to organ donation. They're worried about the kid who's been waiting on that list for three years, who has a good home, gets an organ. That's not gonna happen if you put monetary value on organ donation, because then you open Pandora's box. You open the capitalistic veil, you remove it, and we think that's bad. Because that has failed us so many avenues in the healthcare system. And again, I draw the example of prescription drugs. What happens when prescription drugs are, are very expensive? People don't get them. The government regulates that, right? Sort of, not really, because there's those companies, which we think will also happen if this, oh, if this, if this plan occurs. We think that the aftermath is going to be so detrimental to our society and how we live that we can't risk it. We think that the risk is just too high. And who is responsible at the end of the day? The state. The state picks up the pieces. And we think that the risk of the state getting involved in this and allowing for, for, for a cost of a kidney, well, they're just not going to do it. They're not going to take that risk and pick up the pieces. And the regulations will be so stringent that the, all the benefits that they claim that will exist are not going to actually exist. 50 more organs are going to pour in, and 50 more people are going to survive because there's going to be such strict regulations because the state knows that this is a bad choice and that this is going to ultimately cause the demise of our healthcare system, which quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, is in quite jeopardy as it stands. Now, what have I told you so far? I've told you that it is the state's responsibility to draw the line. The state does place limitations on healthcare and what our bodies, what we can do. We don't have legalized drugs for a good reason. 
And we think that the state getting involved in this will just ultimately not be a good thing. And so you have to ask yourself at the end of the day, would I prefer to live in the fairy tale land that the government has painted, and which these effects could be true, or am I going to live in reality and use my knowledge and the examples that we see in everyday life in our healthcare system to prove that that is otherwise not true? Now, I just ask that example of the little kid at the end of the day who's waiting for their heart, waiting for that kidney, waiting for their eyes, whatever it is, are they actually going to get it? Now that there's a monetary value and a corrupt system in place, I say no, ladies and gentlemen, and that is why you must, with your moralities and ethics at large, vote opposition. Their organs, mm -hmm. then why do we have the massive problem that was outlined by the first government? 
I mean, my understanding is what Tuna got up here and talked about is how the Chinese government forces, you know, chooses the dates of death penalties for their prisoners to sell those organs, right? So there's a lack of organs. The reason the black market is there and, and the, pro you know, let me calm down for a second. The problem, Debbie, is that the black market creates even more of a, co more of a price spike, right? And, it, and it, 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 inequitable distribution of, or of organs, right? Medicine should help suffering people. That means you don't have to be a millionaire to get a liver, because you sold your liver to the government and the government's gonna put you on a waiting list. Now I'd like to get to what Mandy said about uh, this black market argument are also, right? She says that it, it gives, the, when the government gives it some kind of value, which I've already said exists out there without, uh, that increases the incentive. First of all, she ignores the net benefits to doing the plan, which is all this money goes into medical advance, which, advancements, which makes people healthier, which means that we need le less, uh, you know, less, uh, organ donation and we have more healthy people. In addition to that, there's nothing, there's nothing new about this increased value that I'm talking about. And she has no reason for why it would increase the black market. If anything, it would increase legally available organs, which means that there would be less of a demand for illegal organs and the market would end, right? Our government organs will probably still always be cheaper than the black market and will be the place to go. The second argument that Mandy makes, how much time do I have? Five minutes. Oh, you used five minutes. Okay. The second argument makes is that is uh, that the government has a right to regulate our health, and this is my whole new argument. It's not that they have a right to help us be healthy. Yes, I'm glad the state is there. It's how they do it, and when we relinquish our individual control over our bodies, that that create um, uh, that creates loss of rights and and, and medicalizes. Uh, Human existence, go ahead. But don't we already have the choice to donate our organs? Why, tell me why, Nicole, it's such a good thing to put a dollar value on it. Uh, this brings me to your third argument, which was that there'll be such stringent regulations. You can't articulate what about our plan is so stringent. I, I think that our, we will follow the, lo the regulations of normal donation. I don't think that there'll be anything different about the criteria for uh, using, or, using or acquiring organs that exist outside of the status quo. So your argument that is that it lead to a demise in healthcare is absolutely false. In fact, I think the money increases the medical benefits um, uh, medical advancements by funding R&D, you know, uh, increasing the health, the health of people. <coughs> okay. I suspect that the second opposition team is going to get up here and say that there is an ethical uh, obligation or that in some way we're, you know, there's going to be indis in indiscriminate definitions about what is a vital organ or what isn't a vital organ. I want you to... Yeah. <laughs> what, I want, what I want you to remember at the end of the day is that negative right the state does, taking away control for you to sell your body, only creates a black market, and that that state control through negative rights it can be equated to things like abortion and eugenics, right? Where the, the, the state starts to say, you can't have a baby unless it's blonde and has blue hair, right? Or you, or, um, uh, you, you, you can't, you, you know, racialize politics. Um, so anyway, I, that's the end of my speech. I'd just like you to remember the distinction between exploitation and commodification. That all, the only thing to solve for people suffering is to give the right of the individual to sell their uh, organs as they please. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good morning. And uh, one of the advantages of speaking so late in the debate is I get to play little games with myself and think of fun things to do while I listen to all of this bloviating on the side of the government. So pretty <laughs> smart arguments on the side of the opposition. One of the things is, well, where is the real market for organs? And in this debate, I can only see one real open market for organ, and that's for eyes, especially for the government bench, because I see a disturbing lack of vision in their ideas. <laughs> I'm going to do today is I'm going to 
to speak a little bit about the first table debate and explain that, and then I'm going to give you what the closing opposition line is, which is some things are just beyond markets, ladies and gentlemen. Some things are just beyond markets and beyond market value. And that's our line, and then I'm going to speak to you about how the proposals, everything we've heard from site government today, dangerously removes the most important element to human health, which is a sense of holism. They're telling you the cure is in the organ, not in the environment. The cure is in the organ. You just replace that organ and you'll be fine. And this is just a shell game. What we see in modern pharmaceuticals would be a good analogy. So that's going to be one of the lines. And then we're going to talk about what real exploitation is about and about the two-tiered medical system that is being uh, that would be offered by the government today. So let's talk a little bit about some of these arguments that we have heard in the, in the debate today. <laughs> In this debate overall, we hear that, well, we need to help suffering people. We really need to just make sure that suffering people always uh, are benefited by medical health. Yeah, Tuna's knocking, he thinks this is great. But let's talk about suffering people within a realistic frame. Like Jacob spoke to you about credit card debt and about the problems on the poor. The decisions that you make, Nicole can talk all she likes about having control of your own body, having control of your own health, all of these things. She can talk about that all day. But in the face of a twenty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollar credit card debt and a failing mortgage, those things become expendable, ladies and gentlemen. And you see that this makes the decision lopsided. The decision becomes something that uh, they can't make fairly. They're not thinking about the future of their health. Right? So this is what we would say to you is that helping suffering people, there's a little thing in medicine that I think they call the Hippocratic Oath. Do no harm. Do no harm. This proposal, I think, would be rejected by any physician or any doctor because of the harm involved in doing this, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a fair decision. It's not a decision that people can make very fairly at all. On the opposition side, we've heard about quality of life and about regulation. I want to address this black market issue. Because the black market debate is something that, across the first table, we've heard quite a bit about. That there's a huge black market for organs now, and then, no, the black market will be exacerbated later in the future. I wonder if there, would, if there really is a problem in the supply of organs because of this black market. Shouldn't there be enough organs available? Shouldn't there be a lot of organs available now, ladies and gentlemen? Why is there a problem with donation if this black market is such a big thing? I want to make a distinction between the exploitation black market and the sale of organs, but Tuna, of course, is going to try to make me look foolish. Go for it. Uh, perhaps because legitimate doctors don't want to participate in black market organ donations. They would only like legal ones. They'll work with us, but not with the status quo, thus saving more lives. Yeah, so doctors will feel much more comfortable working with the cartel of the government, the legal cartel of the government, <laughs> than working with the illegal cartels of the status quo. Yeah. Yeah. That's a wonderful yeah. distinction. Yeah. I'm sure yeah, exactly. they feel very comfortable with that. Yes, sir? Is it your position that the government is a cartel? Is it your position that our government, our doctors, cannot uh, correctly allocate these organs and take care of people? It's our position that doctors are human, and doctors have taken this oath to do no harm. Our position is going to be that if you put a monetary value on these organs, it's just going to create more harm than good. That's the line that I'm going to give you, and I'm going to go into more explanation of that in just a few minutes. So as far as helping suffering people, we actually see that this is going to cause even more suffering because the poor are the ones who are going to be exploited in multiple ways on this. It's one thing to have rights to your body, but it's one thing to have rights to your body when you're trying to decide whether or not you can pay for the heating bill for your kids or pay for food for your kids, and that's the decision that they're trying to force on poor people. So let's talk about the exploitation. Let's talk about that in terms of the two-tiered medical system uh, exposed here. And this is going to be some of our new argumentation is what you're going to get from side government is huge payments for a kidney. You don't go and pay like $6.95 for a kidney, ladies and gentlemen. You don't pay $10. We're talking thousands of dollars. If you look at the status quo, egg donation from women is like thousands and thousands of dollars for that right now in the status quo. No, thank you. So with that as a model, you can see people are going to pay large amounts. What this is going to cause, ladies and gentlemen, is a shift in government funding and priority from real workable, sustainable medical situ uh, solutions in the government to paying people for their organs. What do we lose under the plan of government? We lose food support for young kids, having them make sure they have a healthy breakfast, more holistic health issues, research and R&D for sustainable uh, cures for diseases that are much more sustainable than located in an organ, ladies and gentlemen, and funding for community health centers and for things like maybe perhaps even Doctors Without Borders. This is going to be a huge money trade-off within the government. How is it going to be paid for is one question the opening opposition is asking. We're telling you exactly what that money would trade off for. Yes? So if it's your position that the government is going to pay huge amounts for these organs, why would anyone go and sell their organs in a black market, which would be dangerous? 
Mm. That's not our mm. argument. Our mm. argument isn't whether the black market, we're not interested in that or not, mm. whether the black market people are going to pay or not. Mm. The black market of exploitation is still going to continue under your plan, as was specified by the opening government, because now people are going to be able to get legitimate money to sell organs that they've stolen from kidnapped people, drugged people, all this. That exploitation, you don't do a thing about. And you create double exploitation in the fact that you make poor people uh, function under a two-tiered system. There's not a lot in the United States now to help poor people with their medical problems. You're taking that funding away, and it's really abysmal. Sir. So, as the, uh, I'm just trying to understand that underneath your system, as the number of people in the world are increasing, and the number of people that are going to be needing these organs is, is increasing, how is your system, though, keeping this exploitation of this black market from going on, too, when these number of people that are increasing are going to be needing more and more are going okay, to be Okay, thank you. I think I waste. understand your point. Is you're confused. Moving on. <laughs> holistic, holistic, holistic medicine is one of the lines we have from closing government today, which is they continue the same status quo medical system, which is that the problem is in individual parts of your body, not in the environment, not in the whole body, not in your diet, none of that. It's given organ just like a pill. We would say you don't want to trade off that. You don't want to do that. Some things are beyond markets, ladies and gentlemen. Holistic medicine is the thing that we lose, and large government support for much larger community-based initiatives for health is what you lose, and that's what we stand for in closing government. So, I thank you very much for your time this morning, and uh, don't sell your organs. It's bad. <laughs> All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard some great uh, arguments here today, especially from my side, who I obviously I support greatly for their uh, for their views on this. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. I also have to thank the opposition for their points, even though they have no validity in this whole argument whatsoever. Um, uh, what my, one of the things I'd like to evaluate, uh, further elaborate on that my partner um, started talking about was uh, her, uh, the long run benefits of this. She talked about how the expansion of the medical field goes on. When you have these individuals that are more willingly, they have an incentive to more willingly give up a part of their body that we are direly needing for research, live tissue, I'm not trying to introduce as, as this goes completely on with our talk, but live tissue is a lot more potent than dead tissue for research for the long run. And that's what we're getting a benefit off of um, as one of the smaller things right there. But you know, we we've talked all around the place between between uh, the ethical issues, the black market, and uh, and uh, whether or not we should give this as a monetary incentive. And uh, the opposition constantly keeps pointing up the whole debt issue of of uh, this argument that you know it's not helping su it's not helping suffering people. Well, um, our whole argument has been about it's your decision, you're right. These people got into debt from their own decisions, from their own uh, from their own decisions in life, and they deserve the right to have a decision to sir, get out of it. Yes, sir. So if they got into these decisions poorly themselves, what makes you think that now they can sell a kidney that they're going to make the right one for them? Well, who's saying the kidney will not get them out of the situation, though? It might be one of the only ones that they have. But that, I was, what my argument was is that how does, uh, how does this have anything to do with what our actual argument's going into? Um, uh, my, what I would like to point out is the fact that long run versus short run, which is what all these arguments have been about here so far, nearly. Short run, we're saying yes, no, blah, 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 running around that. It's going to work, it's not going to work. Well, long run is what our country plans on. It's what we live for. And long run, when you have these, when you have a, a new system introduced into the capitalist society, we have a new, uh, by, we have a uh, new market opened up. So we're going into, the medical field is going to increase on the genetic level, which is always a good thing. It prevents the fact that we are not going to hopefully in the long run need this at all. This whole exploita supposed exploitation or 
an individual's right to sell this kidney because it, it will be, um, by a research that we are done from this, it will be fixed. And, uh, On that point? Or your government could just allow stem cell research and you could just start growing your organs now. But that's new information, so it's any allowed to this. It's in our own discussion, isn't it? Anyway, um, doesn't sound very holistic. <laughs> Give me a second. Show some support for my brother. Yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, our first prime minister laid out what our goals were. Is that you know, is that life is the most important thing that we are uh, that we are outlining here today, and life is the issue. And individuals, we have so many people in the hole that are dying, and you have one person that can save another. Um, on an ethical standpoint, what is more? What is more human than that? Sacrificing yourself to save another person. This person is now a part of you. They are now connected with you. You have this, this absolute connection in the, yes ma'am. But sir, you talk about that as if that's not a possibility. Organ donation is already a choice of the individual. Tell me why a monetary value on it brings such a benefit. Tell me how a monetary value off of it right now is keeping it in the lacking. Why are we in a shortage of it? Yeah. yeah. You just said that it's the best gift you can give, and it sounds like at a moral and ethical standpoint that people would want to give that gift already. Tell me why all of a sudden it's going to increase and become less corrupt if money is involved. Don't you think that it's going to only become more corrupt? Uh, by whose definition of corrupt? People, people need an incentive sometimes to make the right decision. It's there, but we do not want to make it because there are too many, there are too many negatives for us. With this, we have a compensation against the negative for the long run of our better benefit. Um, and uh, we also outlined that, you know, the, where uh, this lies in the individual's control over their own body right here. If we, if uh, we, let, we let someone else decide what we're going to do, then are we a person? Are we not just a machine then? Are we just a computer that's programmed in there? We have the right to do what we want. If I want to take up skateboarding, that's a perfect fine thing with me, even though it's a problem. Yes. Yes. Well, isn't it taking away a right from me if you've assigned a monetary value to my kidney and now I have to pay a credit card debt with that kidney? That's taking the right away from me to keep my kidney. You had the personal right to sign up for that credit card, though, sir. <laughs> so if your irresponsibility is what's gotten you into the debt, then I'm sorry, then it's going to have to be your own responsible choice that you're going to have to make to get yourself out of it. Um, you know, uh, we are trying to save lives here, and by, sh by giving an additional incentive, though, is one of the ways that we can do this. Like I said, there, there's a lot of negative with having to give away an organ, but you know, we, we have, it's just human nature. We want compensation while we're giving up. I mean, we love to have the idealistic society that you were that you were writing out. That yes, we're giving everything away freely, and that it works, and it just it doesn't. Um, if that was true, civilizations would have never developed money in the first place. Um, and you know, aren't we a capitalist society in the first place? You know, the free exchange. The, the exchanging of goods for monetary value. This is what we run off of. This is what our founding fathers who opposed <coughs> that established this country wanted us to have. They want us to have the decision to make this. You know, and uh, you know, and when we're getting onto the ethics, so it's like whose ethics are we talking about? And who has the right to say that their ethics are the absolute best right there? We are at least giving compensation for our ethics. We're given a, we're given a, uh, reasoning on why it works and why we should go with it. Um, there's the, uh, the negative that goes with it is extremely small compared to the overall result and the overall benefit for everyone. Um, is that time? Okay, sorry.
very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the government benches today have tried to take the moral high ground in this debate. They've tried to tell you that it's all about saving lives and that we want to let people die. They've tried to reach out and touch your hearts today, ladies and gentlemen. But don't let them, because if they touch your hearts, they will take their grubby little fingers on those hearts and they will wrench them out and give them away for some dollars, ladies and gentlemen. Because the morality... stand for is a morality that says it's okay to take vulnerable people in vulnerable financial situations and exploit those people and pay them and force them to risk themselves, their health and their life for money. No, thank you. And in summarising this debate today, I'm going to look at two things. Firstly, I'm going to look at this issue of the problem they've outlined and whether or not this is really the best solution to it. And secondly, I'm going to ask a fundamental question of what kind of a society do we want to live in? And do we think that this is an acceptable value to have in society today? And I'm going to show on both of those questions that the answer is no. It's not the most effective solution, and it's not the kind of society that we want to live in. So firstly, this idea of the solution. Because we've never disagreed with the problem that was laid out here today. All of the analysis that we heard, all of the examples that we heard from the first proposition speaker about the situation, about the waiting lists, about the people who die because of organs, we agree with. We don't agree necessarily that this would be the most effective solution. It could be effective in terms of maybe you give people money, maybe organs come back in that sense, but we've shown you some analysis today about maybe how it won't even lead to more organs. But more importantly, we're standing here to tell you today that even if it did lead to more organs, even if it solved the problem, it wouldn't be an acceptable solution or the best solution. Because I tell you what else would solve this problem, ladies and gentlemen. We can make a decision uh, that people with IQs under 100 really weren't very important in society. So we could kill them all and we could take all of their organs. No, thank you. And we would solve the solution, okay? We'd have come up with loads of organs and we'd have solved the problem. But as a society, we might have some problems with doing that. And the proposition benches do agree with this. They do have a, a, some moral sense of you don't do anything whatsoever in order to allow a, a problem to be solved. How do we know this? One, because they won't allow people to sell their vital organs, despite what they say about freedom of choice. They think that would be a step too far. And secondly, they won't allow children to be involved with this scheme. They say they can't make those decisions. So they're not willing to save children's lives in this way. So they do accept as a proposition bench that there does have to be a sense that this is an acceptable way, that it can't just be that this solves the problem. And what we say on this side of the house is there are all sorts of reasons why other ways might be more effective more education to encourage people to give more organs, a potentially using a system like they use around the world where you get people to opt out rather than opt in, stem cell research. There are all sorts of ways. They never tried to tell us why it had to be this, why it had to be this commodification of organs that had to be the solution to this problem. And we say it shouldn't be this solution on both practical reasons and moral reasons. Why should it not be the solution we use practically? Gina. I'm curious as to why it took an hour for the opposition to come up to an answer for this problem, the one that we posted in minute one okay, of the well debate, I, I, and I, now I, you I just seem, have one. I seem to remember come, giving a point of information in the first speech, which said that in Spain they deal with this situation by using an opt-out clause, and I seem to remember that our first speaker brought up education on this side. So we're not running a counter plan, we're saying that there are all sorts of ways of solving this problem that don't come with the kind of consequences that the propositions plan do. What are the consequences of their plan? Firstly, it's really expensive. It would be really expensive to buy all of these organs because nobody's going to give them for free anymore, right? Why would you when you can get paid? And that's going to divert money away from other medical sources. Secondly, we talked about the fact that it won't actually deal with the, um, with the black market. Because as soon as you allow buying and selling in this area and remove the protection of law and make it something that's happening, it means it's going to happen um, more, more often and it's harder to regulate. No, thank you. But actually, they don't. Because we heard so much from the proposition about the black market today. And we, say we're wrong about this and say um, that actually their solution will solve the black market. If what they really want to do today is solve the problem of the black market, then let's clamp down on the black market, ladies and gentlemen, and let's offer some more protection and introduce some laws about that, not try and introduce something that comes up with all of these new problems. We've also talked about the fact that this doesn't cover children, so in that way it's not a good solution. Um, and we've talked on the benches about the corruption that comes involved when you use money. So there are all kinds of practical problems with what we've heard from the proposition today and their solution. But I want to move on to this second issue, because really the heart on the opposition side today, the heart of the case, is this idea that we do not believe that this is an acceptable solution. Even if the practicalities worked, which we've shown they don't, it's not morally acceptable. 
Now, we've heard from the proposition today, you should be able to do whatever you like with your body, the government should, um, should stay away, it's all about freedom of choice. But clearly that's not the way society works. They agree with this, as I've said already, they won't allow people the freedom of choice to donate their vital organs. So they already agree that actually we don't have that complete control over our own bodies. Yes. How can someone donate their vital organs? Wouldn't they die? Yeah, but why shouldn't I have the freedom of choice? Apparently, according to you, I can want that money to pay for my children's college education. I can make a decision with my own body that I'm going to give up that vital organ because it's going to benefit my family. But we don't let people do that, do we? And exactly, it's the same principle. We do put limitations on what people are able to do. And there is risk involved in this. Of course there's risk. Risk of surgery, risk of needing that second kidney future, in future life. And we don't believe that people should be allowed to take that risk in this situation. What other ways have we talked about or that don't, you don't allow have freedom of your body? Well, they say the government out of the bedroom, but we say why in that case is prostitution still against the law? Why is sadomasochism um, against the law, ladies and gentlemen? Why can't you take drugs? Why can't you sell yourself into slavery? Um, why do you get revived if you are found having tried to commit suicide? Um, why don't we allow consensual dueling between people, ladies and gentlemen? You're out of time. And it's because really, actually, we've established in society the fact that we don't allow people to do what they want with their body because, ladies and gentlemen, we don't always think they can make good decisions. That was their reason for not including children, that children can't make good decisions on this matter. But we've shown you that adults in financial straits can't make good decisions either. Because it's not just, ladies and gentlemen, that this is bad because it commodifies the body, it just takes away bodily integrity, it makes us less human, which is what we started off here telling you about today, ladies and gentlemen, and it removes the dignity of the human being to commodify ourselves in this way. But it's particularly bad because this isn't going to be happening to the rich. The rich will have their bodily integrity and their dignity intact, and it will be the poor ladies and gentlemen, the debt-ridden, who will feel forced to degrade themselves in that way and to give up this level of humanness and dignity because of financial pressures. And so, ladies and gentlemen, because it's not the best solution to the problem and because we don't want to live in the kind of society that allows that, we beg to oppose the motion.